there is like a cloak of mystery that that covers the porn industry and so many people have these misconceptions about it and you know one of the most common things that i see like challenges to the idea that sex work is work it's like oh it's not work you just like come in and spread your legs and lay on your back like you're a lazy whore and and if you've ever <laughs> if you've ever spread your legs on your back then you will know bottoming is work <laughs> you know yeah you know and yeah any anybody who I, I, and obviously like it's not it like it isn't just like sometimes it is just that mm -hmm. but also like that's like work means exchanging something like like two different things of value right mm -hmm. so like if a service or a product or content is of value to someone and then they're like willing to exchange like money or you know uh any anything of value like for that that's the marketplace, baby. Like, yeah, you know? supply and demand. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean that that stigma of like, oh well, like your lazy horror is like, I don't know. I hear that and I'm like, honey, what's going on with you? Like, what's your insecurity? Like, sounds like you wish that you could do that yeah. for work. Sounds like you're. You're jealous. Why are you so obsessed with us? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think also too in this new like age of entrepreneurship where the internet has given people so much autonomy over their careers and so much control, right? That if you want to be successful, um, you know, because the studios are still around and they're still doing well, but it's kind of not like it was. It's not yeah. as easy to get a contract now and just have a studio take care of you totally. and pay for everything. And all you have to do is show up and like do your scenes. Be the talent, yeah. You know, and now these days with like OnlyFans and stuff like that, like anyone who has a successful OnlyFans account will tell you like they have to work a lot. I mean, because it's about engagement. Your fans Absolutely. want to speak to you and they want um, that interaction. They want custom videos. Um there's, there's a lot to it that I think that people don't think about. And I, then obviously the behind the scenes of productions is somebody, you know, my days are 12 hours, 10 hours if I'm lucky, but they're long. Yeah. And it, and it does, it involves those mundane elements of production. And a lot of it looks like being hunched over a computer or like, hopefully like ergonomically properly sitting in front of a computer, but sitting on a yoga ball with your back straight. Absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, also even that thing that you're describing that like cult of personality, um, engagement, mm -hmm. like that is also labor. Like that's not just the fun part mm -hmm. that it looks, the reason that it looks to people like, you know, the, the performance of social media, the, the performance of like personhood or being casual or just hanging out. Like the reason that it looks like that is because it's a, a performance that requires like preparation and talent and like finesse and mm -hmm. experience. Like that's why some people are better at it than others. Yeah. And it's the same with sex. Like if you ever watch amateur porn, you know that like, if, if you look at amateur porn, actual amateur porn, like people just like setting up an exhibitionist, like setting up a camera in their bedroom and then having the same poorly lit sex that they always have, which, mm -hmm. you know, more power to exhibitionists. Fantastic. But like, and then you look at like porn with good production values, which like I, at this point, like cannot watch. I cannot get off to poorly lit porn. <laughs> like, mm. I'm like a very like fancy high production value um, <laughs> sort of person. But anyway, enough about my tastes. Uh, like if you look at the difference between like really accomplished porn performers and like, you know, just your like regular Joe and Jane Schmo or Joe and Joe Schmo, uh, exhibitionists, like porn, star the thing that I think that porn stars do that is so extraordinary is like making something that is for most people who never like perform or get paid for anything related to their sexuality is like a very internal experience mm. and they make it external. And I'm not just talking about like rosebuds and cream pies external, you know, mm. I'm talking about like the, <laughs> like the experience of pleasure, the, even the experience, the experience of intimacy, the experience of passion, even like in, um, you know, scenes that are scenes. That are Sorry. I can't get over what you just said. 
Because the rosebuds not come in here talking about rosebuds all the time. The, the rosebuds thing didn't hit me for a second because I thought maybe you were talking about like I don't know like flowers romance? and romance. And then when you said cream pie, I understood what you meant. And then external, anyways. Sorry. Just, no, I'm just coming in here. That was just a very clever. You. It was very clever. <laughs> Um, well, you know, it's, it's refreshing. Sometimes I have to like censor myself with these kinds of things. So I'm yeah. like no. here ready to be <laughs> vulgar. Yes. With you. Love it. <laughs> um, but you know what I mean? Like the, the, like when you're just like having sex or, you know, like having a BDSM scene, like with one other person, you might be thinking about like what they're seeing or what they're feeling or what they're experiencing. Hopefully you're thinking about that a little bit. Um, but you're, you're not thinking about like we were just talking about, uh, like enunciating or projecting, right? Like if you're in a theater, you can't just like have a conversation with somebody on the stage. You Mm -hmm. have to like project to, Mm -hmm. you know, the cheap seats. And, um, and I feel like, yeah, the performance of sex is really about, um, like, yeah, I mean, making just, it so that that's like that. That's sort of like comprehensible to the to the voyeur, you right? Because it's really about like providing entertainment to the voyeur, which is why working with new people is difficult because they don't understand the concept of we call what we call opening up, mm. which means that basically, like, you know, because normally when you're in missionary, um, you know, if it's between a man and a woman the girl, the woman's legs are kind of wrapped around the guy, and but you need to see penetration in porn, so the guy has to kind of have sex You gotta sideways, cheat out, yeah, yeah. Open his hip, and you know, always have to be aware of the camera, and look towards it, and make sure that, you know, they can see everything they need to see, and that's something that only an experienced performer generally understands. Totally. So, there's definitely um, like an art to it, for sure. Absolutely, and that's why, like, you know, I mean, my, my comic is in part about sex robots. And like, that's one thing that I find really fascinating about the con- the concept of sex robots. Like if you ever watch like fucking machine porn, I remember the aha moment that I had where it was like, Oh, it's you, you, you're seeing the penetration. Like you were talking about, like you're seeing like a dildo, like going in and out of a hole, um, in a body, in a person's body. (laughs) But, um, but then like you're taking the like pesky person, like attached (laughs) the torso that always blocks it. Yeah. Like out of it. And it's like, you know, with all due respect to the people who are often attached to those dicks, it's like, you kind of just want them to be transparent. Yeah. You know, you kind of want to be able to like have x-ray vision through them to like see the pussy, like, and, uh, you know, fucking machines offer that. And I, and I feel like, um, you know, potentially sex robots could like offer that as well because they could like be human shaped or they could be like any shape that you want for like any purpose that you want. They could have like a transparent middle, like a little like window. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like when, yeah, you could like go, it could be like a peep show where you go up to the window and like look through, you you like go up to the ass of the like Android and then like open a little ass door <laughs> and like, you know, you have to pay, you could put in a coin maybe. And then you like look through and then you're like right up and you kind of have the, the POV. Like it's like the dick is coming out of your nose and you're like fucking it. Anyway. <laughs> wow. God, there's just like so many possibilities. It's like endless. they're limitless. Yeah. It's funny when you were talking about the whole positioning thing, my, the first thing that came to mind was, oh my God, this is why triple anals are so hard to shoot. Like it is so hard to shoot three guys with their dick in a butthole because of the torsos That's right. and like the leg pesky, placement. Pesky torsos. It's so, so I've never shot a triple anal, but every time I see like a picture or video of one, I'm like, wow, that was, that it's, like it's that took you. Yeah. I mean, that, that was tough. Like you guys worked on that one. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what I love about one of my favorite genres of porn is the gangbang. And like, mm. and I've been on set like uh, in various capacities um, mm-hmm. of gangbang porn. And like, when you have the chance to like really watch it happening, it's it's like a ballet. It is. It's, I've said that so many times. It has to be, it literally has to be choreographed. Yeah. You know, and there's really sophisticated artful ways of doing it and then there's sometimes it's also more like a sport you know like a little bit more sort of like 
brutish, but Who can uh, get in there like first. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The gamification of the, of yeah. the gangbang. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, it's, um, it, and it also is like quite beautiful. It like requires so much communication, mm -hmm. like verbal communication of like, what do you need? Do you need water? Is this position comfortable? Okay. I want to go for the double anal now. Okay. Now we're going for the triple anal, but also like communication of bodies, right. Mm -hmm. That, and it is like a dance, like a, and you know, usually the person getting penetrated is doing it backwards and in high heels. Yeah. Literally. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I've, I've talked about this so many times in my podcast, I've shot a, a few gangbangs and because, you know, on camera are always zoomed in to just see the girls and like the torsos of the men and the penises. Yeah. But if you're pull back and you watch the guys, they look at each other and they give each other signals like, okay, you ready? Okay. You go in. And then like, there's like this, this, it. it's, it's pretty incredible. And this is why, and actually it's funny. Um, I had a long talk with Lisa Ann about this because I shot one of her gangbangs. But it's actually more important the guys that you hire for the gangbang than the girls. Totally. Because it's actually more important that the guys like each other rather than if like they like the girls or the girls like them because they have to work with each other. And if there's like weird blood between two guys and like someone's not getting hard. Absolutely. I mean, you know, th there's this term homosocial of mm -hmm. like people of the same sex or gender, like having a relationship that is not necessarily like erotically charged per se, but mm -hmm. it's like very intimate. Mm -hmm. And I do feel like not so secretly like that is my favorite part of like a, like five guys and one girl gangbang. I mean, I love watching girls get fucked. Mm -hmm. I will watch girls get fucked every day of my life. I hope, um, <laughs> uh, you know, in, in person or on video or whatever, or participating, but, um, there is something I also, I mean, I, I'm bisexual and I love men and mm. I like, I do sort of love like men, like working together to like, <laughs> you know, get a job done. And like, it's, it is people look at a gangbang and they don't think about it as being about pleasure. They think about I think a lot of people see the aggression mm -hmm. and like, I enjoy the aggression. It's contextualized like within, you know, mm -hmm. like a BDSM scene or like we're performing aggression, like, because that's what makes this scene exciting. Mm -hmm. Um, but I also just see it as like, uh, all these people working together to like make each other feel good. Yeah. It's a party. Well, and again, if you're ever like behind the scenes of a gangbang, um, you know, provided obviously you're, it's, you know, with good people, yeah. um, you'll see like the aggression happen while the camera's rolling. And then when we call cut, the guys like pull back and then they're like talking about baseball oh and God, they're like totally. asking the girl if she wants water, like you, okay. Was that position good? Like 100%. it's just a complete flip of the switch. Like people just think it's, it, it I mean, it really is a performance and I think people forget totally. that. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>